Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred Friends. Tonight, I got a, I, I got a very special show for you guys. You know, I, I've been talking about, you know, I, I want to push these young guns. These kids are our future. Um, you know, maybe, maybe if we help them along in the future, they'll remember us in the past. And so tonight, I've got some very, very special guys on tonight. I, I've got a, a very good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Mark Gong, along with his two sons, Mark Jr. and Jaden. And um, they're, I, they're always great to talk to. Mark is just terrific. And I have a very, very special guest on tonight, Mr. Ryan and his son, Nico, and uh, Podesta. And he has... Uh, we're going to talk to his son. His son's a great, great little player. And and what's so cool about these guys is off the field, their kids are just top notch. You know, uh, one thing, you know, one thing I just don't like about <clears throat> some of the people in paintball, you know, they come off the field, they're swearing, they're yelling, they're doing all this. There's no respect. There's, you know, there's, there's other people watching you when you do that. And these kids are just terrific. I mean, and players, oh, my God. I mean, these are young kids, and they are smoking. I, it's just uh, to see where it's come to this point in time for paintball is just absolutely great. So what I want to do is we need to all get together and help these kids any way we can and keep them going. Um, so I, I cannot wait tonight to talk to these guys. They're um, absolutely terrific, really, really are. And then, um, you know, since I started this, I have got swamps, literally swamps. Uh, Mark Gong and, and uh, Jennifer Montressa, they, they actually um, brought this to me and thought it would be something good for us to do. And I says, uh, you know what? Let's get it on, period. So that's what we did. And I got to tell you, it has just been overwhelming. I, I'm going to mention a few things tonight real quick before I bring my guests on. Um, I, I, I'm going to start with Patrick McKenna. Now, he got a hold of me. He says, we have kids' team. It's the Upstate Recreational in the Carolinas. So, you know, um, Patrick, I, I will in the future, I promise, get you slated to be on a show because I think what's going to happen now is every month we're going to have to do do some kind of young gun show because this is uh, absolutely overwhelming right now. And I, and I always take and say hi to people that are chiming in. Tracy Perez um terrific terrific person uh tracy and i'll probably be doing something here in the future so you're gonna want to stay tight uh and and keep an eye we're gonna be doing a i want to set up a show to do with her and so that's coming and robert hansen always watching rob robert i just can't say enough about you you're great but real quick before i get to my shout outs i do want to get my guests on here but i i, I just have to mention um a couple of things uh, the Monte Casino game uh, is in September, and it's in Illinois. And it's like the uh, 12th and 13th, I believe, or 11th and 12th. I think it's 11th and 12th. Uh, when I pull my, my co-host up, Bill, here in a few minutes, he'll tell us. We want everybody to come in. There's Butterworth, one general, Dan Colby is the other. It's going to be an absolute riot. We are going to have a great time. So if you get a chance, we definitely want you to come to this. Now, I want to mention some more young guns. Um, Jennifer Montressor, uh, we all know who Jennifer is. Her son, Tim, uh, worked a lot of years in paintball. Um, very, very, very good person. And uh, anyhow, we want to keep his memory rolling. And so he started the Iron City Classic. So Jennifer's got two young guns teams going in to this. Now, I am going to try to mention every one of their names. Everybody knows Sometimes I, I nail it, but most of the time I don't. So if I say your name wrong, let me apologize ahead of time. But I'm going to give it a shot because I want you all to be mentioned in it. Because, you know, Jennifer has been working very, very hard to promote this. And um, I, I love working with Jennifer. She's a great, great lady. And so anyhow, let's give it a shot. We're going to start with Montressor's Marauders. Okay. And the coach is uh, Charles Holland. That's the coach of that team. Now, here we go. The player. This is going to be a good one. Alexis or Alexis Giacio, 13 years old. Dominic Nates, 10 years old. Jonathan Nelson, 14 years old. Bradley Rumrill, 12 years old. 
and his brother Bryce Rumrill, 14 years old. Now those are, are one team. Those are Montressor's Marauders. Cool name. I love it. I love it. Now the second team, this is Jennifer's Young Guns. These are these guys are going to be on next week. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna pull uh, um, Jennifer's Young Guns on next week. Uh, it's coached by James Grayley. Uh, his son, Garrett Grayley, 11 years old. Colton Dahl, 14 years old. River Bailey, 12 years old. Trent Nita, 17 years old. Knox Tabers, 11 years old. Kyle Saylor, 11 years old. Ben Slaper, 16 years old. And Jack Flynn, 13 years old. So I wanted to mention them all tonight, and I, wa I want you to tune in next week to see these guys uh, because we all need to work together to promote them. You know, these guys are our future. Hey, I, I feel if, if we help them into the future, they will not forget us from the past. Okay. That's a big thing to me. You know, I, it, it, it's just to make paintball great. I worked a lot of years when I first got into sport to, to make paintball bigger and better. And now I've got all these people like Mark and Jennifer and Ryan and everybody jumping in to, uh, all do this along with my co-host Bill Bailey. Um, so I, I hope everybody out there will give us a shot. And when you see these kids are playing someplace, go support them. You know, you don't have to go play. You don't have to take them on or anything like that. Just go stand on the sidelines and support them. Yell, cheer them on, make them feel like somebody because they really are somebody and they are the future. Now, real quick, I'm going to give my quick shout outs and then I'm going to bring everybody on here. Um, uh, Tim Schloss. Tim Sloss, Houston Tiger Strike Camo. You know, this, this is what I'm talking about. Some guys in the past. And he's still there. He plays in the band with us now. Uh, Tim Sloss had Tiger Strike Camo. Now he has Gateway Paintball. And uh, you're going you're gonna to want to be keeping tuned. There's more coming with Gateway Paintball next year. It's going to be uh, pretty pretty cool. You're just going to want to stay tuned. Then Mr. Dan and John Colby from Immortal Air. They have been my sponsor for over 30 years. They have, uh, to me, the best air system that's out there. That's all there is to it. I just absolutely love it. And then Mr. Budor. Budor, um, great person, supports everything. He's uh, just just proud to call him a very, very good friend of mine. Um, and he needs no further introduction. Bud's a terrific person. And then Tom K, Air Gun Designs, uh, was my sponsor for years. Rainy and Juby Boucher had paintball news back in the day. Boy, I wish we had that paintball news back now. It was just absolutely terrific. And I, I know John Armadilla has his um, on the media, and it's cool. But uh, it would just really be sharp to, to have a paper to hold in your hand again. You know, uh, Rainy and Juby Boucher, they used to do the show. I mean, they used to do the show. They used to put the paper out twice a month and never charge the players for it. You could go to any field and pick this up and just absolutely read what happened, what was coming up, where the fields were, what the news stories were, what was new in equipment. It was very, very cool. And then also I mentioned Mr. Randy Camilla. He was the editor for APG. Mr. Jerry Braun had Paintball Sports Magazine back in the day, and uh, we just did the Woodsfall World Cup, or the Woodsfall, whatever you want to call it, back at in New York uh, a month and a half ago now, and it was absolutely terrific. I am looking so much forward to going back to New York and doing that again next year. Then Mr. Ross Alexander, uh, Line SI, had the Bushmaster. Um, Mr. Jim Lively um, and everybody, Jim's wife a few weeks ago had a heart attack, and she is doing very, very good, Jim told me. I just got a hold of him the other day. So uh, I think all our prayers help, you know, just like you all help Tracy Press. Uh, you know, we're a, we're a community, and like Tracy always says, you know, we're paintball strong, and that's how we need to stay. And that's what I want to do for these youngsters. It's the same exact thing, period. And then Gino. Gino from Belkin. I mention him every week because Gino does an awful, awful lot of things behind the scenes that uh, people don't know about. You know, because he doesn't televise it. You know, he doesn't put it out there. He just flat does it, period. So I got to I gotta mention him. Now, real quick, let me bring up my co-host, Mr. William Bailey. How you doing, Bill? Good. How are you, Fred? Doing good. And you're at a baseball game, huh? Yeah, my granddaughter had a had a ball game, a little softball game. It was pretty fun. Oh, cool. <laughs> How'd they do? They lost. Cool. 
but yeah. you know, you went there and supported them. You know, that's see, that's what I'm talking about. The same thing, you know, it, with all the the kids now that yeah. that we're getting on here. That's what we need to do. Is we need to support these kids. Period. Yeah. So, get them out there. Get them playing. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I sent James Conley. I sent him a uh, link, but uh, he hasn't responded. So. Yeah. I, I've, I've been watching. He still hasn't seen it yet for some reason. So yeah. Hopefully, so hopefully get on there. Yeah, absolutely. So you know what? Um, what do you say we start with Mr. Mark Gong and his two sons, Mark Jr. and Graydon? What do you say, huh? Because I mean, what a better group to start with, right there. How you doing, Mark? How you doing? We're doing good, buddy. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you for inviting us. How you doing, oh, Bill? Oh, good, Mark. Look at those you. two guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I, you got to be so proud. I'm surprised your head isn't like this big because you got the best kids in. That is so cool. Yeah, that, I'm very blessed. I'm lucky. You are. You know, real quick, um, before we bring Ryan and, and Nico on, tell us about the Hermans. Now, I think what people are confused about is we said there was a, the Hermans calendar. It, But what it actually is is a giveaway. Am I correct? Absolutely. So it's what it is. It's a calendar raffle. So you buy a calendar s slot. We have 22 chances to win. So it's $20 a calendar. So what it does, each day we'll draw, we'll spin a wheel and your name will pop up. Somebody's name will pop up and they'll win the prize of that day. It could be a $50 gift certificate to Home Depot, um, you know, Starbucks uh, gift certificate, what, what have you. So you have a great chance of winning. And once your name is pulled out, pulled out, uh, we'll remove your name off the list. So you could only win one time. But if you buy multiple calendars, you're in there, you know, as many times as many calendars that you buy. So it's a good opportunity to just raise awareness and, and help a, a young team, you know, make their dreams come true. Well, see, that's the whole point of, of doing that, you know, a, a fundraiser for the Hermans itself. And, uh, you know, and I, I will do the same thing, you know, for, for teams across the U.S. as long as they're viable, you know, like, uh, like Jennifer's. Her teams are going to be great. The Hermans, you know, the Hermans is like my, I've got a Hermans jersey, you know. I got that special from the Hermans. I absolutely love that. So, you know, yeah, you know what it is, is it, it just helps these kids. It shows that the paintball community actually cares about them. And and we do. But, you know, that's a good way to show up, you know, to, to try to help, you know, because these kids got the equipment. The parents got them the equipment. But we need to, to get them around to different tournaments and, Get them used to playing like that and, and traveling just a little bit, don't you think, Mark? Absolutely. I mean, they, right now they're playing local tournaments, so we'd love to we'd love to see them at ICC. We'd like to see them at, you know, somewhere down in Southern California or anywhere around the world for that matter. You know, so that's why we're trying to do our best to to raise money for the kids. We started a nonprofit organization to help raise money uh, for the kids, and you know, we're we're here to help the kids in general. It's not it's not about us. It's about these children and making sure that paintball is, you know, a great experience for them. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, Jennifer's doing the same thing. You know, Jennifer has the two teams. Uh, and, uh, boy, that would be so cool if they could go to the ICC. Oh, absolutely. maybe next year, you know. And maybe maybe we, that's what we do, Mark. Maybe we work hard this year so we can get the team into the ICC next year. Wouldn't that, that would be, be great? Awesome. Wouldn't oh, that be great? It could, it could be done. But, yes, it can. It can. Yeah, it, it can be done, you know. Like I say, you know, Mark, you, you know all about it, you know. I mean, you, your job requires you bringing people together, too, you know. I, I'm not going to mention what it is, but anyhow, um, and, and, you know, what you've done to bring all these kids together and the same thing, you know, and, and I know Michael Beard helps you a lot. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Mike, uh, terrific person. And it was so cool, Michael posted a picture of four generations. You know, his dad, Rick, you know, because, you know, Rick was the first captain of the Ironman. Rick actually started the Ironman. If everybody out there doesn't know it, Rick was an iron worker. Rick, Rick Baird was an iron worker. And that's how they got the name, the Ironman. That's that's how it started. So Rick Baird had Michael Beard. Michael Beard had his son. His son had a, he has a, a grandson now. So they had a picture of four generations. Um, I don't think it's Brandon's son, but it's uh, it's. I think it's Michael's daughter's. Yes, son. it's Brit Brittany's uh, son. There you go. Yeah, and uh, how how cool is that? I seen that picture, and I was just like, how oh, cool! Absolutely love it. 
And that's what's going to happen to you now pretty soon, buddy. A few more <laughs> years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be Grandpa Mark out there with his, teaching his grandkid how to play paintball. I'll be, in, I'll be in my walker with a crash cart right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, we have, we have Ryan. Uh, Ryan must have a bad link or something like that because we had him on and then he, he clicked off. So we're just hoping that uh, Ryan Podesta and his son Nico are going to come back on because, you know, I watch these guys play, you know, it's especially you know, Mark Jr., Jaden, and Nico. Those guys were screaming out there, Mark. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, the, these kids have, have come a long way. We've, we've watched Nico for a while now. He, he plays really well. Mark Jr. really admires the way Nico plays. So he has someone to look up to. So, you know, Mark Jr. really tries to emulate Nico's style of play and We've seen him make some great strides where now Mark Jr. is really aggressive, just like Nico is. So it's, it's pretty impressive to see how fast they've progressed in such a short period of time. Yeah, I, I mean, these guys are really aggressive, too. Boy, you don't want to blink because they will take you out. I, I, and I couldn't believe how fast they are, too. You know, they're just incredibly fast. And, and I watched Nico when he went out there. He dove behind one crawled alongside another bunker to get up. It, it was just, and these are kids. It's just amazing. I absolutely yeah. love it. Nico's a phenomenal player. You know, Northern California is, is, is a special place to, for all of us here in the Bay Area. But, you know, they bring out a lot of good talent. And Nico's, Nico's the future. You know, let's just call it like it is. He's a great player. And, you know, he's, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. He, and it, he's, he's just a polite kid. So then what more do you ask for in, in a paintball player and a kid? Yeah, well, you know, same thing with Junior and Jaden. They're they're the same way. I mean, you know, they're they're great on the field, off the field, extremely polite. Just uh, I, they must get that from their mother, but they are just very very polite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they How definitely often, don't get that from dad. <laughs> How often do the Hermans actually get to practice as a team? So the, we we practice like sometimes uh, once a month before the next tournament. So we don't want to burn the kids out. Uh, we know that they have other activities to do. So a lot of kids are in football. A lot of kids are in baseball during this time of the year. So we really got to you know pick our battles wisely and 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 pick a pick a time for everybody to to come out to practice. So we actually have a great system going. We practice you know twice before a tournament, and the tournament's like every other month. And the kids actually show up to one of the practices, and by the time they get to the tournament, everybody's yelling together. Bill, we had, we had 15 kids at our last tournament. It was incredible. We had a whole Herman's tent, a sea of red and black all over all over the field. Which was you three months ago, we would never have dreamed that we would have had that. So it, 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 it was cool, and we have 100% parent buy-in. They're, they're all very supportive, so it's, it's really nice. Oh, yeah, and, and I mean, you had Anthony there was cooking food for him. You had to see it, Bill. I mean, it was uh, it was a heck of a setup. And, and you know who was really running everything? You know, the, the moms all helped, but, the, but Mark and, and Michael Beard, these guys, man, they got their teams hustled on the field. And then while they were playing, they coached them, too, which I think is, is something that's absolutely great because it, it not only teaches them the right moves at the right time but you know it, it just it, it just shows them that when they they make the right move it pays off and mark i watched you out there a bunch that day when i was up there i was only up there a few hours but you just were slamming them out there man showing them exactly where to go what to do and that's how you coach three yeah, it's important for us to, to guide these kids in the right direction. We're not going to give away the opposition's position, but we're going to tell the kids that they need to gunfight, that they need to, you know, keep their head on the swivel and keep on looking. So we we don't want to give away everybody's position, but we do want them to to have an enjoyable experience and, and play well. And luckily, we we have some kids that really listen and they actually, you know, pay attention. So we're, we're very fortunate. Now, well, you know one thing that what, oh go ahead, Bill. Are you allowed to coach during the actual tournaments? Or? Absolutely, yeah. We're so for the beginners, we're allowed to coach from the sidelines. So, yep. like the first two tournaments, we were very active from coaching from the sideline. This tournament, we kind of took a step back where we didn't say, "Hey, look down the tape, look down the wire, look inside." We just said gunfight. We didn't we didn't tell them where anybody was this time because mm -hmm. we want to see how these kids are progressing. So 
it's going to get to a point maybe by the next tournament where we step off the field to see how they really play against the opposition with no coaches on the sideline. So we're almost to that point. These kids are playing really well. Yeah, that's you know, that's bringing them in slow in the right way because, you know, I watched yeah, – because I, I watched one kid behind the bunker and another one ran on him and he had his back to him. And I heard you say when the kid was running up, one shot. And that's all the kid took was one shot. And I think he shot the kid in the, the backpack too. So, you know, I thought that was very cool. But, you know, that's – that's how you teach them to do stuff right, you know. Because yeah, okay. back, you know, back in the old days, these guys wouldn't have went up there and just ripped the guy. It didn't matter if he had his back turned to you or not. And that just doesn't promote the sport. You know, if you got you got parents that want want their kids to do something like this, you got them in the background, and they're they're watching that happen. They're not going to let their kids go out there. Absolutely. So. I mean, we got we have to make it fun and we have to make it enjoyable for them. So, how enjoyable is it if if some kid gets shot? 10 times in the back or in front and he doesn't want to play anymore. So we want to make sure not only that our kid takes one shot and make it in a reasonable spot where it's not going to hurt so that the, any kid comes back and they still want to play. So we there got to make go. sure that it, that it stays safe for everybody. Well, we got Ryan and Nico. I think they're back up here now. Here we go. How are you guys doing this evening? Good. We had to switch from uh, one internet to another internet, so we're all hooked up now. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, very, very good. Nico, we, we've been talking about you, buddy. Boy, you're one heck of a player. So uh, I, I, want to, I want you to tell everybody, how long have you actually been playing? How long? Four and a half years. Wow. How old are you? Oh my gosh, that's that is amazing. No, no wonder he's so good, huh, Mark? Yeah, he's 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 a great player. We really oh, admire the way Nico plays. Yeah, I watched him when I was up there that day. Like I say, I watched him go up, and he got behind a bunker, and then he crawled up to the next one. You know, and I'm just sitting there going, "Oh my God, look at this kid play!" It was just uh, it was absolutely great. So Ryan, let's talk to you a little bit here. Um, so you got obviously you got him started because you've been playing it quite a while too, right? Uh, yeah, I've been playing like twenty five years. Please. Please. Yeah, so so that's a quite a while. Yeah. So and you you have a field also, Ryan, right? Yeah, we have a field in Petaluma, California, in the North Bay. Uh, it's called Playland, and then so Nico gets to play a lot, and then he gets to play with a lot of caliber players. Um, so he started playing walk-ons really early and then kind of outgrew that by the time he was about eight and a half. And so he's been training with us pretty solidly for like the last six to eight months. But before that, playing with us quite a bit in the advanced walk-ons. Um, yeah, he started with a mech gun and he started with a mech 50 cal. And when he started bunkering people and the 50 cal wasn't breaking, we had to move him up to a regular 68 cal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I went up to your field. I went up there with Freddie uh, Valente one time. What a, what a great layout you have. It was just, uh, and then you took me inside the, I don't know what you call that, you know, where all the, it almost looked like a Star Wars set once I got inside there. Um, but it was so cool. Just a yeah, great, we great field. Yeah, and Airsoft and paintball. We do, we have quite an operation. We do a lot of different stuff. So that was yeah. the yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, oh, it was, it was, that's exactly what it was, but it was amazing in there. And then outside, everything was so cool. Uh, how, how often are you open? Uh, we're open every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, we do private parties, do a lot of corporate events, a lot of team building events. So, yeah, when I was up there, you guys had a, quite a few kids there. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, because you do both paintball and airsoft there. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So, Nico, you like going out and playing on your dad's field? Pretty good to, you know, have your own place to go practice and work out and play with the best. Pretty fun. What's your favorite marker? Mm, I don't think I have one yet. No? <laughs> no. I don't you maybe. Oh, is that right? So you're not you're playing on the Hermans, though, right? He plays on the Hermans, right, Mark? He plays with his his dad's team, the Bay Area uh, Gray, right? Bay Area Gray. What's it called, Ryan? Bay Area yeah, Gray. Uh, we have a program called Gray Area, kind of like Gray Area. Hermans, but with 
all adults. Nico's the only kid on our program, really. And so our beginner team was mostly adults, and then Nico being 10. Um, so in the event series we're playing, we're hoping to have more kids come out, and we're going to develop a kids team and, you know, do some more with that. It's in our area. There's not a lot of kids that play. So, like, Mark has really been pushing that in Northern California, which is really cool to get the younger kids out and be more organized so. yeah well that that would be cool if you know if you guys could get a you know get a, a five-man team for nico too you know get four other guys that are what are the 16 and under is that what you guys do mark uh we're roughly about you know seven to twelve you know we had we do have some 16 year olds my daughter's on there so you know right. other than that you know it, it's basically a kid's team it is wow well, nico played like a grown-up though my god <laughs> Nico's a monster. He's a monster out there. Do, it, do any of the fields in your guys' areas like give you give them special rates, you know, for the kids' theme to practice on? Or we actually pay full boat, so there's no special kids' prices. We we walk on, we pay the price uh, of admission, and we walk on the field just like any other uh, player would. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. You know, I mean, uh, Brian, if you could get a team set up for Nico, get four other guys, I mean, that little five-man would be incredible. Yeah, we actually, for the next event um, that we've been playing against the Hermans in, uh, they're talking about just doing a kids division. So we actually already have, like, a three-man kid team. Oh, good. And, uh, so it'll be all kids. I think they're all two 10-year-olds and a 12-year-old. Wow. That's awesome kids that we're trying to encourage them to come out they're not quite ready um but they're all like 11 and 12 as well so we've been encouraging them it's a little tough um because there's a big separation of skill between some of the kids and so nico's training with us and we're playing like you know division two semi-pro players and he's playing with us and then the other 11 12 year olds are like well we don't want to do that but we want coaching so it's hard to kind of separate all the time between training, coaching, and the different levels of the younger kids. Right. Well, yeah, you don't, you don't want to force it, you know, you want to bring them along because, you know, if they're not having fun, you know, pretty soon it becomes like a job to them, then they're not going to want to do it. Yeah. And they get shot a lot more too. And they, they don't like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing that impressed me about both of you guys, you know, is on the field, all three, you know, the kids are just absolutely great players, but off the field, so polite, you know, and, uh, you know, Ryan and Mark, you know, that's what it takes to make paintball even better in the future. It's having people, you know, like the kids growing up that are impressionable. Because like I say, if parents see people coming off the, the field and they're, they're yelling at this guy and yelling at that guy and, you know, everybody's cheating, nobody's playing fair, they're not going to want their kids to ever do that, you know, and that's one thing that would pull a sport. And, you know, when I was up there that up to Fairfield watching you guys play, I did, I mean, I didn't see anything close to that. I mean, it was just, if I was a parent and I had a youngster and they had never played paintball before, I would want to get them into playing paintball because I see, I would just want them to hang with kids like that. We were actually very fortunate at, at the event. We had some other players, kids that were there and they wanted to learn more about the Herman. So, you know, we, we don't really recruit. It's just by word of mouth and people just come up and they want to play. We invite them to come out and play and people were just walking up at the field and want to learn more about the Herman. So, you know, we have an open door policy. If you want to come, come and, and see if you like it. We'll never turn anybody away. Right. Well, you know, that's what Jennifer, that's, that's how her teams are started. You know, she's got two teams now. You know, Jennifer's Marauders and, and or Montressor's Marauders and then Jennifer's Young Guns. So, and like I say, the people that, that like Jennifer, I'm sure she keeps a tight rein on her kids too because I, I'm sure she won't put anybody on there that's going to make uh, the sport look bad in the future. But you two guys have done so great with, with your kids. They are just uh, not only amazing players, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, to me, the big thing is once you're off the field, because I like building the sport. I like building paintball, period. You know, and Mark, you've known me for a long, long time, and you've watched me try to build a sport for a long, long time, too. And, you know, if you don't have the right attitude, people just are not going to want to get interested, you know. And like I say, when I was up there watching these guys play, 
and then come off the field, uh, they were just absolutely terrific. Man, they, I, Nico didn't even know me, man. He, he looked so cool. He had his headband on and stuff like that. He was talking to a guy, and I'm like, oh, my God, this this is just a little big guy. You know, I mean, it was incredible. It, so it, it, that, it, that's it's the coolest little thing, Fred, to see all these little kids walking around in full gear. You know, who oh. would have thought that, you know, you get like a bunch of 7- and 12-year-olds running around in full gear, you know, playing paintball. I mean, Nico is very fluid on the field. It's amazing oh, yeah. to watch him play. He's he's just that fluid. And if 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 I had a kid that wants to learn how to play paintball like Junior does, he watches he watches Nico because he wants to see how Nico does things. And Ryan Ryan could probably tell you he he's seen. I mean, Junior's growth from the last time Ryan saw him to this last tournament is just totally different. Totally different because he says, "I want to be just like Nico. I want to play like Nico. I want to be just as aggressive." So he practices at home all the time. So he lives, dreams, and sleeps paintball now. So, you know, it's a it's a big drastic change, and you know, it's Nico it's Nico's inspiration that that, that makes uh, Junior want to be a little better. Yeah, but you know what? That's what it. That's exactly what it takes. You know, but look at look at Nico. He's ten years old. He's been playing for four and a half years. Come on. <laughs> I mean. That's why he's so good. You know, he's got his dad teaching him. He's out there playing with, with semi-pro guys. My goodness gracious, this this stuff. Ryan, you can't be any prouder. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. I'm very proud of him. He works really hard for it. And uh, like Mark's talking about with Junior and stuff, is he still puts in the work. He plays soccer, too. He's uh, on the select team in Division One. here. He's a, he won the state championship last year. He's an MVP. Like, he's just... I'm very, very proud of him. He works very hard for it. And, like, when my guys go out and do drills at the field and, like, a Wednesday, they go to Nico's mom's house and pick him up and, like, just text mom now. They don't even call me. And they go out and do drills. And eat and... It must be nice. Yeah. yeah. I love I it. I love to do that, too. But I want to say hi real quick to Gary Jones. Uh, Gary Jones has a paintball press uh, from back east. Gary's watching the show right now. And uh, he says hello to all the young ones. <laughs> well, obviously that's not me or you, Bill. Quit laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nico, I, I know you love paintball, and I know you're extremely good at it. How, what do you see yourself in the future doing now with the sport? You see yourself to keep playing, to get better, to eventually get on the team and play pro? Um, I hope to get on. Oh. I don't really know what I'll be doing. I'll just have to see as I go on. Oh, very good answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna end up uh, on a pro team, and you're gonna probably end up making all kinds of history in this sport too. Um, just like I think Junior and Jaden are gonna do the same thing too, because you guys not only started them out young, you started them out right, you know, and. Uh, you know, like Junior out there, plant, he practiced with the OG Ironman, you know. Nico out there practicing with Ryan and his, his the big guys. So I'll just say the big guys, you know. And that's why these kids are getting so good. Absolutely. You know, just the, the pedigree that they get to pick from to, to practice with is incredible. I mean, Northern California used to be the mecca of paintball. And, you know, it, it, it's up to us to try to make it the mecca of paintball again. And I really think we could bring it back to the glory days and you know what ryan's doing at his field with nico and his teams is 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 real strong what we're trying to do with the ironman and with the hermans we're trying to build programs here so if everybody joins together and moves in the positive direction we'll, we'll get northern california back on the map you know it's just a matter oh yeah of time. Well, i think we're all working towards that right now um you know i don't think northern Cal ever left the map to be honest with you it's just uh <laughs> You know, just kind of kind of went dormant for a while. I, I, I will say that we never allowed to go. And, uh, you know, this is the future right here. Look at these guys. Look at that smile. <laughs> right on, Nico. I love it. Yeah. Very cool. So, Bill, you got some guys in the Midwest. We were going to have uh, Conley on, but obviously he uh, yeah, it, I didn't hook up. So. Yep. I, I don't know what happened. They're a team called Prime Suspects or Usual Suspects. You know, they recruit a lot of the younger players, and they go to the tournaments with them. 
you know, and, and they get to play, you know, in tournaments and big games. You know, play. They're they're big in the St. Louis area. It's hard. Well, you know, Ryan and Mark, you know, they take the time to go out there with the kids and, and play, you know. I I, I got to tell you, Bill, I wish you could watch these kids play. It would blow you away. It, it, it just, uh, it's amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I watch Junior run up. Junior's on that trigger instantly. Boy, he hits that bunker and he's he's on somebody. And then I watch Nico. He went up and he got behind the bunker. It was a blow-up field. A Belkin. I might, let me say a Belkin blow-up field. And uh, anyhow, he went down and he crawled. And somebody texted in earlier. They says Nico is the snake. So um, <laughs> Nico, you already got a name, buddy. He's in the Nico. He's in the Nico. Bill, I wish you could see Nico play. You know, I, I, yeah. if you could see some video. Next time, I'll try to get some more video of him. Video. He moves so fluid in, into the snake, and the way he moves. The way he switches hands and the way he shoots is really, really impressive for a ten-year-old. It's amazing, yeah. And then when he comes off the field, takes off his mask, he's got a smile on his face. He's got his headband. I mean, it's just cool as could be. It depends on how the point goes. How smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I seen him, he was smiling just like that, right there. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, I spent half my life learning how to get this guy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let me tell you, I don't even think I go out and play against these guys because they'd be out there whooping me right now. So I'll, I'll tell Fred, I'll tell you who's another good kid is uh, Mike Baird's grandson. Yes. Gage. Yep. Wow, what what an incredible kid on and off the field. For, first and foremost, foremost, off the field, great kid. The parents did a great job raising him. Then when he gets on the field, he's like the typical Mike Baird and Rick Baird. Yeah. Yep. Just a true champion on the field and off the field, and, and he could literally play. This kid is good at baseball. He's good at uh, basketball. He, he does 4-H. He does a lot of other things, but then when he steps on the field, automatically he's, he's like, great at paintball. He's only played, like, maybe a handful of times, and, and he's picked it up really well. Yeah, I met him when I was up there. Mike calls him dimples. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's Mike. Um, but, yeah, I, I met him. And, I, you know, he didn't get a chance to really watch him play. I talked to him a little bit. Um, cause Mike introduced me to him and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I watched the Hermans go out and play. I watched Nico go out and, uh, next time he's out there, I'll definitely go out and watch him. Um, cause you know, you know, Michael, you know, Michael played with us too, you know, on constant pursuit. He played with the Ironman back in the day. So, you know, back in the day for us, it was actually a cool time growing up in paintball, even if it was raw, like it was back then. So you want the same energy and you want the, the same experience for all these youngsters. You want them to grow up with that type of feeling that it's something that they absolutely love. And, you know, the better they get at it, the more they love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, how, how would you like to grow up? How would you like to see, yeah, my dad's got a paintball field. And I love paintball. <laughs> I mean, how cool would that be, you know? Is junior tired? Uh, jun junior's tired. Yeah, it, you know, he's, for him, he, it's late. Okay, it's not Junior. <laughs> so junior's okay. Rick, how do you get more younger players involved in the game? How, how do we get more younger players involved in the game? You know, we, we just gotta we gotta open it up and we gotta make it positive for the kids and show them that it's not a sport where you're gonna get hurt if, if it's with the right people. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay. And, and, you know, and, and the people that they meet, like I say, you know, I, I didn't get to talk to Nico when I seen him in Kerfield, but I watched him talk to other people and I watched his actions and everything was great. Sorry, sorry, Junior. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I do that just before dinner when it's not ready, but yeah, anyhow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Your wife had knocked me down. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, George Contreras, uh, he, he says this is awesome. Uh, so, George is watching us now, too. So, um, yeah, we're getting uh, some pretty good watchers here. I, I know Bud watches this all the time. Tim Schloss watches this all the time. You know? And Tim Schloss has a field in St. Louis, and uh, Bill's been there, and, and Tim's been building it up. But Tim really, really pushes the youngsters a lot, too. He's. Uh, He's big time into that. He doesn't let like the 
he doesn't let like the guys with the, the autos come out there and shoot his kids up you know he just uh he keeps it i think just pro probably like what you do ryan you don't let the guys uh go out there you know the the real skilled players with the automatic squat there against some of these beginners do you no we separate by skill level there you go uh, like a big common question actually before like oh you separate by age and i'm like oh, i want to play with my 10 year old yeah. and then so they're like oh well you know i'm like and then i'd have to separate you from your own kids if you played if i did by age you'd be an adult. so most people understand you separate by skill and then we try to also separate by like depending on the day and stuff like that so, yeah it's and then we handicap um, our more advanced players if we have to, but in general, our advanced guys play with advanced players. We're one of the few fields that'll let like a guy who just bought a new gun mix in with like tournament players if he wants to, to get, you know, some practice. I know Nico started doing it too. It's like, yeah, dude, you can play. You might get shot yeah. a lot, but you can play. And you know, I got to tell you, you know, when, when, when I started playing, you know, because we practiced that, Back in the day, constant pursuit in the, in the Ironman. We, that's what we practiced with all the time. You know, um, I mean, we were, uh, and I always wanted to play against anybody that was better. You know, I did not mind getting shot up. I just did not want to go out and, you know, playing with the Walcons was never fun to me. You know, it just, unless I had a splat master or something like that, you know, it, it, was, it was just never fun to go out against them. I always wanted to go out. And play against anybody that was better than I was. I never cared if I got shot up. That was immaterial. And Mark, you were the same way too, you know, because you were just a kid when you started playing paintball with me. Yeah, absolutely. I just told a kid too to me, I guess. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, you how old were you when you started playing with uh, Constant Pursuit? Ooh, man. Yeah, see, I was in my twenties. I was in my twenties. I was in my yeah, 20s. early twenties. So. My early twenties. Early twenties, yeah, because you were still a kid when we went down and did the show, and that was like in what ninety six or something like that. I, I might, I might have been twenty three or twenty two at the time when we did the yeah. show. Yeah, because you slid pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. He was able to get up without help. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ryan, I don't know if I don't know if you ever seen that show when we that we did down at MGM Disney, but that has been the talk for 25, 30 years about Mark Tripling or Mark Fallen. Hey, yeah. you guys know Tim Schloss? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Want to say hi? <laughs> What's going on, Timmy? Guys, uh, it's real interesting listening to what you guys are doing. I had a question for. Uh, the guys, did, did they start the kids out on the low impact guns or did they start them off right away with the 68s? That's the question. So, okay, well, I'll answer it from the Herman standpoint. So, the Hermans, we start them out with 60 caliber, 68 caliber balls. We don't, we don't start with low impact, they play real paintball from go. So, our kids are playing real paintball, they're getting real aggressive, and we're, we're not shy about it. We keep them playing, you know, the sport as it was designed to be played. How about you, Ryan? What did Nico start out with? Um, when Nico started playing, he was only about six. So we started him on a 50 cal gun because that's the only thing he could hold up. And uh, so we started him with a 13 cubic inch tank and a 50 cal gun, and he played against 68 cal players. We don't do we don't do 50 cal at our field. I have to buy the paint, and he's the only one shooting it. And so he did that for about eight months a year. And then he started playing ball with us and like the advanced players. He was the only one with a mech gun and the only one shooting yeah. cow. And so he was getting frustrated because he would shoot people. And like I said, the first time he bunkered somebody and it bounced off because the 50 cow doesn't always break. And he got really upset because the guy turned around and shot him. And I thought, he was like, oh man, are you okay? And he's like, he's cheating. I shot him. I'm like, nah, bounced off, buddy. That's part of the game. So we went out and we went to the store. We have a store too. So this kid has a private field and a private store. Uh, and so we got him the smallest marker they made at the time, which was the E1 by Dangerous Powers. I mean, it's like a little bit bigger than my phone. Wow. And, uh, it wasn't you know, really Ryan, I'm up for adoption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 
take you. I know, that's the part that sucks. <laughs> I know, nobody wants you. <laughs> so, Tim, I was telling him. 68 Cal never looked back. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you hear that? He started with a 50, and then he went up to the 68. Yeah. And you I, got Tim, I got my grandkids, and we go out there on the weeks, just, just me, and I got a 10, a 10 and an 11-year-old, and uh, the 10-year-old's a lot like Nico. He's really athletic and mm -hmm. a really good shot. You know, and just, we used to work, I'm working them up to where they're, you know, where they want to play more, but uh, it's just, you know, it's, you know, when out, you know, the California teams, you guys always have this heritage of, you know, you know, great teams and, you know, you pass it down and pass it down, pass it. I mean, our field is so recreational. You know, you see, you know, you'll see a customer once or twice a year, maybe, and there's just, there's nobody. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to turn that around so that we can get more kids coming out and, you know, just, you know, get them introduced more and more into the sport. And it just, it's, you know, we don't have that team mentality at our facility. And the other facilities, it's like almost a killer mentality. You know, they're out there just taking each other's heads off on these airball fields. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know, you don't want to send a kid up to that. No, nah, but your facility is terrific, though. I know. I I know you get a lot of people every week, so you got to be getting kids in there too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had. You know, we, we do a ton of fifty cal parties. But oh know, really? Yeah. Oh man, I, I bet forty percent of my business is fifty cal parties. Oh wow. And, yeah, that's all eight to eight to t eight to twelve year olds. Oh, very cool. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, we do a lot of them, man. It's, uh, it's it's good, and we get a lot of you know you know the fourteen sixteen year olds. I mean, you know, we had a summer camp that came in there today, and they were all kids at the youth summer uh, teen summer camp from one of the cities. They were like uh, ten to fifteen year olds, I think they were. But I mean, it's trying to figure out how to get these kids to where they want to come back and actually make an investment, you know, in time. You know, to, to where they want to, you know, become a regular player. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's really tough for us because, you know, you get an open play, you'll get 40 or 50 people in there, and, you know, you got some people that are sharks, you got some people that are out there to have a good time. It's keeping them separated and keeping them, you know, keeping them, you know, behaving themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing, you know, Ryan does on his field. He's pretty good at that. I just held up your, uh, your, your gateway paintball sticker that you gave me. Oh. Or did you sell me that? You might have sold me this. I know. I'm cheap more. <laughs> well, so, uh, I, I don't know. I'm figuring out some way to get it to you. The, uh, but, but, I mean, you know, I just sponsored a kid's race car, you know, which says play paintball on it. You know, he's got a you know, midget race. I'm trying to get in, you know, just, just any exposure we can get to the younger to the younger kids. Right. But, I mean, it's, I don't know. I think it's going to take a little time. The mentality up here, just, I mean, it's, it's a different, you know, I mean, I don't, I've, I've heard, I haven't seen, but I've heard that Jamie Connolly and those guys, at the, uh, what's the name of their team, Bill? I can't remember, something suspect, crime suspect. But they're doing a lot with the kid, which is good. Um, right. I had, a kid, I had a kid show up at the field this weekend wearing one of their jerseys. Uh, he looked like he was about 11 or 12 years old. But, you know, it's just, you know, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to take up your shit, but I just tell those guys what they're doing is fabulous. I really applaud them. And, uh, you know, one of these days, maybe I'll figure out a way. I'll buy a couple plane tickets and send my grandkids out and they can play with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, wish you could, I wish you could see these kids play, Timmy. You would, uh, it would blow you away. I mean, it's unbelievable to watch them at their age. It's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. It's really neat. I mean, the skill level and the talent. I mean, these kids are so athletic nowadays. I mean, these soccer players and all the sports are. I mean, you know, my little guy. He's a he's a football player. He's a soccer player. And he's a diver. You know, and I mean, he does everything. You know, and it's amazing to see the talent level that these kids have got. And you know, and why can't they use it on this? Why is it? You know, like my grandkids are just lucky. You know, they got a grandpa that's got them a hundred acre paintball field. You know, I'm I'm up for adoption. Did I mention that? Uh, yeah, come on in. Uh, I'll, I'll run by Cherry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. And, you know, I was going to wish you a happy birthday at the beginning, and I forgot all about it. Yeah, I'll let you say happy birthday, Cherry. This is Cherry. This is Cherry. This is Tim Schloss's wife. This is what actually made Tim Schloss. Well, happy birthday, dear. Thank you. Tim said he's married to a young girl, and I'm like, well, that was a compliment since he's older than me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was trying to get him. To, I was trying to get him to adopt me, but I just can't get it in my mind to call him dad. 
<laughs> oh man, I gotta tell you, we had such a good time with you in New York. It's not even funny. Oh, we, I, I'm still talking about it. I mean, we have such, you guys are all such dear friends. And I just told Tim tonight, we went out for my birthday to Red Lobster, and I said, we have met so many people over the years from paintball that are just like our closest friends, and we would have never met them except for the sport of paintball. Absolutely right. Did, did he you pay know. for dinner or did he make you pay for it like he usually does? Well, kind of both. Yeah, so I knew the my Dutch treat. Yeah. Well, my <laughs> girlfriends took me out last week early for my birthday, and one of them gave me a $50 gift certificate to Red Lobster. And he actually said, no, don't use it. No, he said, don't use it. I'll just, you know, take you out. You can use it another time. I said, well, no, it was a birthday gift certificate. Let's use it. And, you know, and then whatever. And he goes, oh, okay. But, no, he did not want me to use it, actually. So that was really nice. But I said, no, you get a gift certificate. I want to use it. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Gary Jones, remember Gary? He had the paintball press. He says happy birthday yes. to you, too. Oh, tell everybody thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful mm -hmm. evening. I'm going to give you back to Ken so we don't take up too much time. We love you guys. Love you, too, sweetie. And you do such a great job. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye-bye now. Oh, yeah, she did. Oh, man, every, everybody's saying put the lady back on. What's going on here? <laughs> right on, Timmy. Sounds good. Is, is that the one they're going to, is that the one they're going to race in August? No, no, this is a vintage car. He's got the 1948 uh, Curtis Midget. It's going to Australia. we, we got to deliver it to Muncie, Indiana. And I don't know why, but that's where it's going, and then they're going to ship it to Australia. Wow. Well, have a but, safe uh, trip, buddy. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, keep up the good work, guys, and uh, I'll talk to you. Hey, Bill, be safe. Hey. Did you uh, congratulate Mr. Bailey on his uh, new nuptials? Oh, I, I'm going to bring that up in just a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. right. He's over there looking tired. I don't know. Was it? Was well, he was not, or something? No, no, no. Nah. For, for Bill, come on. Now he was at a ba he was at a baseball game. Yeah. You know, watching watching people do athletic stuff tires him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to walk all the way to the barn. All right, brother. You stay safe. Hi, Timmy. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was Mr. Tim Schloss. Uh, he owned Tiger Stripe Camel back in the day, and uh, now he owns Gateway Paintball. And yes, everybody, real quick, Bill Bailey just got married to his uh, longtime girlfriend, and Susan, and she's a sweetheart. And I talked to Tim. Tim goes like this. He, he wanted me to show up at the wedding with him, Bill. So when, it, when the preacher asked, does anybody object? He yeah. wanted me on one side and him on the other side going, we do. <laughs> so, see, I'm your buddy. I said, no, I won't do it. That's why we didn't tell anybody. <laughs> it's a craziness. Right on. Hey, guys, I, I'm sorry I had to jump in. You know, Tim Tim is a good guy. And I'm sure, you know, Mark and Ryan, you guys know Tim Schloss from yes. back in the day. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. And, you know, um, for Tim call in to, to congratulate you guys, for what you guys have done with your kids is uh, absolutely amazing. So real quick, uh, Nico, when's the next time you're going out to play? Um, we have practice next week, but I'm not, it's going to be for fun. It's not going to be for yet. Oh, very cool. And how about you guys? How about you, Jaden? When are you going to play? And Junior, Junior back over there? Yeah, Junior's here. Oh, cool. Yes. When are you guys going out to play next? We're going to play next weekend, too. Oh, next week, too? Yeah, we're playing next weekend at uh, Fairfield Extreme. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll jump up there and see you guys. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know what, Nico? I appreciate very much you coming on tonight. And you too, Ryan. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I... You guys, you guys are amazing. You and and Jaden and Junior, you guys are our future. And uh, like I say, I couldn't I couldn't be more proud of you guys. And I'm sure everybody that's going to watch this show tonight, over the next week, is going to think the same thing about all of you guys. You know, first of all, the two parents 
just raising their kids terrific. The kids, phenomenal paintball players and phenomenal people off the field, too. I just, uh, yeah, I'm lost for words. I can't, can't say enough about you guys. So let me start with you, Nico. Nico, I appreciate very much uh, you, you bringing your dad on tonight. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to let you and your dad say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. You guys out the field. Okay. Hey, Ryan, one more time. Your field. What about uh, that? We're at playland707.com, gunfightersports.com, and then our store is 31st Outfitters. And you are located in Petaluma? We're in Petaluma, California. Yep. And you're open every weekend? Every weekend, 10 to yeah, 5. Yeah, because it never rains here or something. Yeah. It just fires. Just fires. Just fires. So yeah, so if you guys are out there, you know I've been to I've been up to his field and it is phenomenal. You guys are going to want to go up there and play, especially I, I I love going out. You had a plane out there, am I right? Yeah, we have a plane on our airsoft field. We have a hovercraft. So we have oh god, <laughs> we just got a new airball field. So we we play on dirt, kind of old school. We don't have turf or anything nice, so we just grind the kids oh and make no, people to play. And no, I so they can escape the sand lot. I like the dirt, baby. <laughs> That's the way to go, believe me. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, Nico, you got a million-dollar smile, buddy. Right on. All right, you guys, stay safe, and thank you so much for coming on tonight. Appreciate you both of you guys taking the time to do this. Of course. Thanks for having us, Fred. You bet. Bye right now. Guys. All right. Bye, guys. That's Mr. Ryan and Mr. Nico Podesta. Man, terrific. Uh, that was so cool. Uh, what a what a great group. And, and Mark, you know, you and I go way back. Um, yes. You know, I, everybody knows how proud I am of you, um, you know, because I tell everybody that. And, uh, you know, what you've done for your kids and to bring them along like you have, you know, I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just proud of you. You did good, you know. You, you you not only did good for yourself and your your two sons, but you did doing great for our sport. And the same thing that that Ryan's doing with Nico, you know. You guys are uh, you guys are just like a, you're up on a pedestal of me. You guys are all great. You really, really are. Uh, we, we appreciate it. You know, we would we wouldn't be there if you never gave us a shot. You know, to to play. So you I'm always earned the shot. Everything you've done. For us. You, always, you always earned it, buddy. Always. So I'll let you guys say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Hey, you know, we want to say uh, goodbye to everybody. We want to say good luck to all the young guns out there, especially Jennifer Montressor's team. Good luck at ICC. And, you know, we look forward to see some positive results for those kids out there. And let's support the youth. You know, it's all about the youth movement. Let's keep it going. Right on. Mark, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us on, Fred. Say good night, boys. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. <laughs> Love it. All right, man. Mr. Mark Gong, Mr. Mark Gong Jr., and Mr. Jane Gong. Wow, I got to tell you, these kids are just phenomenal. They are, you know what? Um, it, it's just you, you can't say enough about them. You really, really can't. Go. Just think what it would be like if, if they had to have used the, the guns that we used. Oh, I still got I still got a scar on my finger from my nail spot. You know, come on. And kids look like Popeye. Their arms they'd be huge. You know? I know. I, I wish you could see these kids play, though, man. I'm Nico Podesta. The kid is ten years old. I wish you could watch him play. He he he's not only a great shot, but his thinking ability while he plays is phenomenal. It, it is his his dad has taught him. His dad has really taught him how to do the some do everything kids, great. Yeah, some people, some kids, they they've got it. You know, it's just natural. You know, it's natural. You know, they might not be very good at baseball or soccer or, or basketball or anything like that, but you put a paintball gun in their hands and you know, they're a holy terror. Absolutely. Yep. George Contreras. George, thank you so much. Says Mr. Fred, Mr. Bill, great show as always. <laughs> George, well, good guy. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, the Indiana Super Game coming up this weekend. At, uh, I know you were you were packing for that, weren't you? Yeah, hey. still packing. 
Jeff Jeff Thompson says says great show too. Jeff watches every week as does George, and and Tracy. What I mean, I I I got to tell you, Bill, we're blessed with our viewers. Oh yeah, heck yeah, we really are. So you're yeah. taking the museum to Indiana, right? Yeah, correct. We'll be setting up. Uh, it'll be a little bit bigger than what we had at D Day. Uh, oh wow, you're kidding. Just a little bit, not you know, it's not bigger, but uh, you know, we're gonna do the full museum at Monte Casino, you know. And that, that's, and that's one thing I want you to mention, Bill. Um, yeah. the Monte Casino thing that's the 11th and 12th of September, right? Yeah, correct. It's it, you know, it's people start showing up uh, on the 9th, and then they a lot of them start showing up on the 10th, you know, it's Friday, you know, everybody tries to get there and they start setting up their camps, and uh. But yeah, all the activities, you know, take off, you know, that Friday night, we'll do a Top Gun tournament. Uh, you have to use our snipers. Uh, and it'll be a Top Gun, it'll be for a gun. We're going to give a gun away. And then, uh, of course, the museum will be open. And then uh, people just hang out and, get, you know, talk with all the old guys and, uh, you know, get to talk with Bud and Dan and, you know, yeah. you, Jim and everybody. Yeah. A lot yeah of I was going to drive into that, but I think I'm going to fly into it. Yeah. So yeah. instead of driving, you know, save myself a little time. And Gary Jones says, "Great show again." Uh, you remember Gary Paintball Press? Paintball Press. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's a great guy. I, you know, I, I hope that uh, he shows up at a lot of our stuff. I'm uh, probably going to end up nominating him um, for the band here pretty soon. It's fun watching his his videos, you know, because he'll just randomly show up at places and he just walks through the parking lot. And, and, he, and he does such a good job at it, man. You know, it, it just, it, it is, it, it's great. I, I, I am very, very glad that I got to meet him when I was out there. So when are you taking off for Indiana, buddy? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, my God. Really? It's, it's only an eight, eight hour drive or so, you know, for us. So yeah, it's too bad. It's just, it's right on the other side of Chicago. So uh, I'll be meeting Dan Colby up there. Uh, you know, and David Ruddick, he's going to be there. Uh, he'll be the other Simon uh, Stevens will be there, so it'll be pretty cool, like a little reunion. You know. So, uh, real quick, where what city is Monte Casino by? Uh, the closest town would be Root House. Root House. Yep. And uh, really, the easiest way, you know, most people would know, you know, of course St. Louis, and then you got Alton, and then about 40 minutes from Alton, if you keep going, I guess it's south. Or I'm sorry, How far no. is it from Chicago? Uh, oh, from Chicago? Um, I'm not for sure. Probably about three and a half hours. Oh, wow. Is that far from Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's only an hour, a little over an hour from St. Louis. You know, oh, it's, so it's in southern uh, Illinois then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. It's, oh. It's, it's, you know, it's really close to all of it. You know, so. Got it. You know, they're not real close to any real huge cities, but there's plenty of hotels, a lot of good places to eat. You know, you got casinos just right down the road if, you know, people want to go and, they, you know. Yeah, I'm going to take a look on a map and see. I was going to fly into Chicago, but I might fly into oh, something. Oh, you fly into St. Louis. Flying to St. Louis? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're an hour away. You yeah, know? but see, I'm going to drive up to Wisconsin and see my mom and everybody, too. Wow. So. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I would. Yeah, I actually would have liked to have come and done that Indiana thing with you this weekend. I thought that would have been cool. Yeah, we. Did, if you did fly into St. Louis, you could still get a rental car there. It's going to mm -hmm. be a lot cheaper, probably, than the taxi. The more north you go, the, the more expensive things. Get. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all about it. That yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to drive up Wisconsin and see my mom. So I thought if I flew into Chicago, I would be close. But I didn't know it was that far from Chicago. Oh, Three-hour yeah. drive. Yeah, yep. Wow, yep. it's an hour and a half from St. Louis. Yeah, it, it's less than it's just a little bit less than an hour and a half. This is wow. it's it's just under a five hour drive for me, and you know I'm here in Springfield, Missouri. Right. So, but we'll be there. I'll have our base camp set up a week in advance. You know, I'll have everything pretty much set up. You know. Yeah, week. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I cannot wait to do that. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a great time. It, They've got a really good uh, cook shack there. Uh, you know, they put on, you know, they cook a lot of different things. Well, I just, I just want to do it for the people that run it, you know. Um, I know they're real good friends of yours. And 
yeah, I know yeah. you're a big hit there every every year, so I just want to come and support it. It's all family that works there, you know, even the cook shack and everything. You know, it's just got it. And they've built a, uh, they've doubled their pavilion. You know, they've got a huge covered area now. Uh, you know, they've built a whole bunch of new bunkers. They built a new abbey, which is you know that's one of the main you know, parts of the of the park. And of course, there's there's a full scale pirate ship there that was built. And he, he he's got his own sawmill. You know, Chris Denny, Chris Denny said it was a five hour drive last time. Ask Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure there's a story behind that somewhere. Yeah. Oh, flats. We had a lot of them. That's know? what I, I, that's exactly what I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. And then Francis Swain. Remember Francis? We had him on a few weeks ago yeah. with the Hellhounds. Anyhow, he said that uh, that's the dream to travel and play paintball with friends. Well, we got to get him to travel to one of these. Heck yeah. You know that? Even, that was, even if you're in a car for, you know, 12, 13 hours, it's well worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's not that big a deal, 12, 13 hours now. That ain't nothing, really. Yeah. So, Francis, I know you're watching. Buddy, we'd love to have you at one of these. And I, I'd love to drag Tracy Prez out. I know she wouldn't come and play, but just to come and hang out with us <laughs> would be absolutely great. So, yeah. All right, Bill. Well, I'm going to go have dinner. Me, too. I haven't ate either, so. I'll bet. I'd pop Man, more. you've had a hectic day, and you got a hectic, hectic week coming up, too, pal. <laughs> Yeah, Chris is going to be going. Chris Denny is going to be going with me tomorrow. So. Wow. Where in Indiana is this at? Uh, let's see, uh, Laporte. Laporte. It's, it's, yeah, it's only about an hour away from Chicago. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, Sherwood Forest. It's a. I call it a bucket list field. It's incredible. You know, Bill Stayback. He's, he's got a hell of a field. It's got it. It's it's immaculate. You know, there's no other way. It, of explaining it there's there's probably a million railroad pies and they're not just you know thrown around anywhere that he's purposely built buildings out of them i mean it's it's crazy it's i can't a, wait to I, I can't wait to go try it myself sometime yeah. i know francis wayne just he says that uh one of these events for sure he'll plan a vacation you know and and we'll we'll help you work on it francis you know i mean uh, i'll even help you get there um i'd love to have you go do it and i'd like Gary Jones, I like to drag in Gary Jones out with any of them. Yeah. So, you know. So. <laughs> All right, Billy. All right. Well, I'm sure glad you made it, buddy. I know it was a rush night for you, and I I know you got a, a hectic week coming up. So. Oh, yeah. I will just make it happen. Just keep yeah, going. Like you always do, buddy. Yep. So, All right. Well, you can go live from there, too. Let me know. That'd be cool yeah. to go live from there. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Cool, to, you know, possibly on a Friday night, you know. We'll you just, let me know anytime you want to do it. You just let me know. And, and uh, I'll find out when Dan Colby will be there. And, and you know, we can just get a bunch of us on there. And, yep. You know. that, that'll be cool. You know, I I, I got that Zoom uh, Thursday. You know about that, right? Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. Four, okay. Four. Are you going to be on or you just want me to handle it? Yeah. No. Yeah, I'll be there. Yep. Good. That's no problem. Sounds good, Tom. All right. Well, you stay safe, Billy. All right. See you later. Mr. William Bailey, my co-host. Uh, couldn't ask for a better co-host. What a great guy. And you know what? I want to thank everybody that tuned in tonight. Um, you know, these kids are great. I, I I want to thank Ryan and Nico Podesta. I want to thank uh, Mark, Mark Jr. and Jaden Gong. Um, these guys are all great. Uh, we need to support these kids. You know, uh, yeah, I keep saying it all the time. And people go, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to do it. Well, let's show it. Let's, let's get out there and show it. Let's. Let's show these kids, even if you can't play, get out there and cheer for them. Let them know that you're behind them. All right? So, again, everybody, um, I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember, next week, Jennifer Montressor's Young Guns are going to be on. Now, that ought to be pretty cool, too. Let's show our support for these kids. Tune in, listen to them, and, and let's really make it happen for everybody. You know, um, I love all the paintball players. You know, I do. Uh, I think paintball, to me, is the greatest sport out there. I love football, but paintball just is something for me. And, and uh, I appreciate so much all of you tuning in and watching this tonight. And remember, next week, Jennifer, Jennifer Montressor and the Young Guns are going to be on. So please tune in on Facebook, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So until then, please 
And Tracy Perez, you're a doll. I love you too, babe. So all words to remember, play hard, play safe, play fair, but get out there and play paintball. So good night, everybody.